All right. Welcome back to Gold Seek Radio. Well, up next, it's Robert Ian from Conquer Change. Hello, Robert. Hey, Chris. This is Robert Ian with ConquerChange.com. This week, CNN carried a story about 13 individual states that are seeking currencies made of silver and gold. The premise of the article is that states are worried that the Federal Reserve and the U.S. dollar are on the brink of collapse. So lawmakers in 13 states, including Minnesota, Tennessee, Iowa, South Carolina, and Georgia, are seeking approval from their state governments to either issue their own alternative currency or explore it as an option. Three years ago, only three states had similar proposals in place. Supporters of the concept include North Carolina Republican Representative Glenn Bradley, who in a currency bill he introduced last year said, In the event of hyperinflation, depression, or other economic calamity related to the breakdown of the Federal Reserve System, the state's governmental finances and private economy will be thrown into chaos. Unlike individual communities, which are allowed to create their own currency, as long as it is distinguishable from U.S. dollars, the Constitution bans states from printing their own paper money or issuing their own currency. But it allows states to make gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. Opponents of the concept include David Parsley, a professor of economics and finance at Vanderbilt University, who thinks state-issued currencies are a terrible idea. He said having 50 feds could debase the U.S. dollar and even potentially lead the country into default. He says the single currency in the United States is working just fine, and he has no idea why anyone would want to destroy something so successful unless they actually wanted to destroy the country. Well, there are those who would say the current system of printing endless volumes of Federal Reserve notes with no production to back them up is what is actually destroying the country and financial system. Edwin Vieira, an alternative currency proponent and attorney specializing in constitutional law, whom I heard speak in 2008 at the Gata Goes to Washington conference, says that gold and silver are fair game for legislators who are proposing state-issued currencies. He believes that because gold has grown exponentially more valuable, while the U.S. dollar loses ground, the notion of state-issued currencies has become increasingly more appealing to state lawmakers. There is traction for this throughout the political spectrum. Ron Paul is sponsoring the Free Competition in Currency Act that would allow states to introduce their own currencies. And Newt Gingrich is calling for a commission to look at how the country can get back to the gold standard. To add what may be yet another potential gold brick in the economic wall, Bill Gross, who runs the world's largest bond fund, said, The zero-bound interest rate policies embraced by central banks, including the Federal Reserve, may end up killing, as opposed to creating credit, and developed economies may suffer accordingly. According to Gross, zero-bound interest rates don't always force investors to take more risk by purchasing stocks or real estate. When investors are more concerned about the return of, rather than the return on their money, the liquidity being provided by central banks can instead be trapped in a mattress, a bank account, or treasury bills. He concluded by saying, We are witnessing the death of abundance and the borning of austerity for what may be a long, long time. March and April of 2000 was the warm-up. October of 2008 
was the appetizer. Unlike this past decade, change will not occur over years. It will occur in months, weeks, days, or even overnight. The potential magnitude of what lies ahead, the kind of shakeout 13 individual states are attempting to prepare for, the kind of uncertainty Bill Gross is alluding to, may well be the standard by which everything else is measured going forward. And until next time, this is Robert Ian with ConquerChange.com. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Robert, for another excellent report. Well, on behalf of the entire GoldSeek.com crew, including Chris Mullen and Peter Spina, I want to wish you a very safe and profitable week ahead. Until we talk again, thanks for listening. <laughs>